This is my new favorite SSD, the Samsung T9. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and as a video creator, I churn through storage. I have terabytes upon terabytes uh, on my desk and I have more SSDs than I could possibly count. And today I'm here to show you the newest one, which is the Samsung T9. So we are nearly four years after the launch of the T7 Touch and the T7. A few years after, Samsung followed with the T7 Shield, which was also quite good and added a more durable, robust exterior. So the T9 is coming in kind of a combination of the basic T series and that Shield protected version because it does have like, you know, an aluminum body and this rugged exterior. But hey, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So here it is, the all new Samsung T9 that is offering up to twice the performance of its predecessor. So it only comes in black and there's a one terabyte, two terabyte and four terabyte option. In this case, I am taking a look at the four terabyte model. Samsung includes two USB cables, a USB to USB-C and a USB-A to USB-C. So it's gonna work with all your modern devices and your slower devices. But if you are rocking a USB-A device and you're trying to get these massive speeds, you're not going to get them. It's nice that Samsung includes a cable, but don't buy this because you want these massive speeds on your USB-A devices. Like all of the Samsung T-Series, it starts off with an aluminum body. So this has an aluminum body that helps keep it cool and it's extra strong and durable. And then it's wrapped in this rubber exterior. So the rubber gives it that drop protection. It's gonna give you 9.8 feet of drop protection, which is three meters. So dropping this, most heights you're gonna be fine unless you throw it into the air. This thing is gonna be pretty safe. That's actually the same durability rating that they are giving the T7 Shield. So the T7 Shield that's supposed to be ultra protective has the same drop resistance as the new T9. But the new T9 does not have the same IP65 resistance rating as the T7 Shield. So if your goal is still the utmost durability, you're probably gonna have to go with the T7 Shield. But if you just want like good drop protection as well as the new faster speeds, then the T9 is gonna be up your alley. Looking closer at that rubber exterior, on one side it says portable SSD T9 and the other side it just says Samsung. It's got these kind of like grooves in it, so it's very textured. It has a very solid grippy feel to it. Like I'm, I'm not gonna like let this slip, it's not gonna kind of fall off my desk or anything. It does have a really nice feel to it, but I will say because of that texture and just rubbery by nature, um, dust and lint are trapped to this thing like crazy. Like I constantly, I mean with a black surface, I'm constantly having little pieces of dust and hair just stick to this thing. It's been a real pain in the butt uh, shooting this video because I'm constantly trying to like blow it, blow it off and get this lint out of here. So uh, just keep that in mind if you like really care about the lint on the side of your SSD. As an Apple creator, this may be very niche to me, but if you care, um, the downside for me with a grippy exterior that's like textured and, and wavy like this is that I can't attach a MagSafe magnet and use it with my iPhone 15 Pro. So the iPhone 15 Pro supports USB-C drive. So I can just connect this right in and I can even record from the camera directly to a drive like this. Super handy. But because of that exterior, I, I want to put like a MagSafe magnet and then just snap it to the back of my phone, right? That'd be super cool. Just It just snaps there and I can record and got a whole little rig going on. Uh, but because of the texture, it's not going to be that easy to attach these MagSafe magnets. Again, very specific to my shooting circumstances and something that I immediately thought of because I was looking for a good SSD for this. I'm probably gonna have to go with a stock T7 or maybe I can repurpose another older drive that I've got. The Samsung T9 has full compatibility with everything that you would expect. So Mac, PC, iPad, iPhone, and of course on Android as well. So just plug this thing over USB-C, it's gonna work for you. It comes pre-formatted formatted in XBAT, but you could reformat this in whatever you needed to. Uh, I like a lot of my stuff in APFS, which is great for small file transfers. Uh, a lot of like little files, like piles of photos and video clips is pretty cool, but uh, it just depends on what your specific scenario is and what system it is that you're working on. So let's talk about the new speed improvements on the T9. And honestly, it gets a little wishy-washy, especially for Mac users. So Samsung says they are using the newer USB 3.2 2x2 spec, which should allow performance at up to 2,000 megabytes per second, which is roughly double 
that of the promised Mac speeds on the T7 line. Sounds great, but the problem is the Mac doesn't support USB 3.2 to the fullest. So let's go ahead and try some transfers and see if this actually does have any performance benefits over a T7. I first grabbed a 1.44 gigabyte file. It was the latest episode of HomeKit Insider, if you were wondering. Uh, and I transferred it to the T9 and it took about two and a half seconds to complete that transfer, just super fast. I repeated that process on the T7 about the same time, nearly exactly the same, uh, same time for the T7 versus the T9. I stepped things up going to a larger file. This time it was an HD movie that was about 6.78 gigabytes. That transfer took 7.86 seconds on the T9, and again, basically the same thing on the T7. So the smaller one and a half gig file, the larger roughly seven gig file, same performance on the T7 versus the T9. But we stepped things up further, and I now transferred uh, a file that was 162 gigs, a compressed folder, 162 gigs inside. And I transferred it to both of these drives. My T7, took seven minutes and 28 seconds to finish that transfer. But the new Samsung T9 only took two minutes and 55 seconds. Over seven minutes, less than three minutes to transfer 162 gigs. The latest Macs don't fully support the USB 3.2 two by two 20 gigabit per second bandwidth. So most of the speed benefits here were actually coming from the cache and not the improvements to the USB spec. When you get to file transfers above 255 gigabytes though, that's when the T9 starts to slow down as the cache fills and it has to write to the slower TLC flash media. The T9 has a cache of about 170 gigs, while the older T7 has a cache of about 50 gigs. Any files under that 255 gigabit limit will transfer at the best possible speeds, which is of course gonna vary depending on if you're transferring a bunch of files or a bunch of really small files or just one big file. The T7 will have the same performance as the T9 until you get to that 50 gigabyte limit that fills its cache. Here's one way to try to break it down easier. Say you have a large cup, right? And you're filling it and draining it at the same time. So it's filling with this big hole here at the top, but it's draining from a smaller hole you poked here at the bottom. So as you're dumping water into the top, it can fill very, very fast. But as soon as the cup is filled, you have to slow down the input rate. So that's kind of what's happening here with the cache. Basically, this is the cache. It can fill, it can go really fast until that cache is full. But once the cache is full, it's gotta slow the input as much as the output is going. That's kind of what we're dealing with here. It's still writing to the faster cache, but at some point it's going to fill up and you're gonna to have to be stuck writing to the slower TLC flash media. So simply put, if you transfer just small files, like less than 50 gigs, you can pick up a T7 because it's gonna have no speed benefits over the T9. Once you get past that, you start going to those larger files, the T9 is where you're gonna see some benefits. Look, I really like the T9 but I like all the T-series files. I mean, I'm still using a T5 for quite a bit of stuff. Like, look how cool this thing looks. Like, we're talking years, years later, and this still looks like just a really cool piece of tech. I love this red color. Absolutely one of my favorite just pieces of kit that I have around. And yeah, I still use the T7, the T7 Touch, and the T7 Shield alongside other SSDs. I have a lot of uh, less C ones. I've got some from Glyph and SanDisk. Like I've got a pile of them, but I always kind of just tend to go to these. I like the looks of them and I like the reliability. The new T9 is, is solid. It's got great durability, still nice and compact and faster speeds than ever before. And I definitely transfer larger files. So I am seeing these benefits of the T9. We're four years after the launch of the T7 series, and I'm pretty happy with the successor. I mean, this thing is durable, it's fast, it's basically what I need it to be. It supports things that not even the latest Macs can fully support, and I'm hoping that they'll support them down the line. The Samsung T9 is a solid SSD. A solid state SSD. They're all solid states. That's what the SS stands for. Uh, but this thing is great. It comes with both cables in the box. It comes with a five year limited warranty. And there's all the software benefits, including being able to password protect this thing for further security. 
If you're at all interested, there's links for them down below the description. And I also did a whole round of video on my favorite SSDs. You can check that out. That's also linked here in this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on the new T9 down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next video.